What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to continue with Netcode for Game Objects. Specifically we're going to be looking at how to set up a relay server. I'm also going to show you how to do what's called an allocation so that we can connect to the service and also how we can join a game after we get a joint code. I'm going to be providing you with documentation and also code examples of how to accomplish all these tasks. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. What's going on guys? So what we're going to be doing today is adding functionality to the existing project that we worked on during the last four videos. And that functionality is going to allow us to play multiplayer games and the games that we're building over the internet. So we have a lot to cover, so I want to make sure that you stick around. So the only thing that I added on this before we before I started today is I added the join code here. So if we go now to the UI, you're going to see that there's going to be a join code, it's just, you know, a text box. And then I just rearranged some of these buttons just to make them look better. And also I added this debug area. So if you look at the scenes, now we have a basic multiplayer scene. And that one is going to be for when we're using unit, when we're using more of a LAN, you know, multiplayer connectivity. This one is going to be for times when we're going to be using the Unity services, which are going to be in this case with the with the relay. So we have a lot to do. So I'm going to start with the fundamental thing, which is to set up basically a project and a project which is going to be a unity project, which is different to the project that you're seeing right now. So if we go to build settings and then player settings, you're going to see that I already have one project in here, but I'm going to unlink it because I want to create a brand new one. And this is going to be the first thing that you do when you want to set up uh, unity services is basically to create an app that is going to be in the cloud and therefore we can use some of the Unity services such as Lobby, such as Relay and other things that Unity provides. So I'm going to select the organization in my case, I have two, so I'll just do Dilmer and then it's going to tell you, do you want to use an existing project ID and I could go in here and then basically select one if you had one already. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to, I think I can just go back, I'll just go back here. And then I'll just do it one more time, select, and then I'm just going to create a new project ID. And this is going to, you know, go out and then create a project ID for me. It created a project ID with the project name that I already had, and then it just added the number one. And that's okay, I think for the demo. And then in here, it'll tell you if this app is going to be target for children's. And in this case, this is not going to be target for children's under 13. So I just go ahead and hit save. And once you do that, we're going to have basically some of the major parts that we're going to need. So if you go now into, we can go ahead and open up a new Unity, a new Chrome window actually. And in this one, we're going to go into dashboard, unity3d.com. You will be prompt to log in. So I'm already logged in, as you guys can see here on the, on the top right. And you're going to see that this is going to be the multiplayer playground. This is the one that I had already. So we're going to go into projects. And I want you to look for the one that just got created. So in my case, is the Unity Multiplayer Playground 1 because I already had another one. Is it going to be some of the major parts of, you know, understanding how Unity gaming services work? You're normally going to get a project ID, you're going to get a project name, and also an icon, and obviously billing, and, you know, if you want to use some of the pay plans, they have some pay plans in there. For our demo, we're just going to use, you know, the free, and then we're going to be using just the relay service. So. If you go down to multiplayer relay, and this should already be selected, and just make sure that that is selected. You can't really see the name of my project because it's too long, but I know that it's, that's the right, the, the one that is selected. And then we can go into getting started. And it's gonna tell you here what you need to do. This is what we just did. We went to services, selected the organization, and also the project, so we're good to go there. We can go next. And this is going to tell you, okay, download the Relay SDK. So yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll just go ahead and hit next. And then you can do Relay it on. So we're going to be activating it. And then once you do that, it's going to basically, you know, finish up the project. But we're actually going to go back. Let's go back one more. This is actually really important here. Just make sure you click on that. And we're going to stay here as well. So we'll go into here. And this is really cool. I didn't understand the UI at first, I'm going to be honest. And then once I used it, I'm like, okay, this is what this is doing. So what this is doing behind the scenes is just saying, okay, what kind of packages you're going to use. If you were starting a project from scratch, you normally will do something like Netcode for game objects, but we already did that. So we don't want to select it. 
We don't need to do a network profile and I'm gonna do just a relay. And let's see, I think that's everything. I also need to do the, the adapter. Let me see if I can find this. So I have that. And there's also another component that I don't see it listed in here. Let's click on generate code snippet. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't list it in here, that's okay. I'll show it to you because we're going to need it as well. It's going to be an adapter that we're going to need. But anyway, so you'll do that and then generate code snippet. And then we're going to be basically copying that. And that's what you're going to be putting into your manifest. So I already did that, but I'm going to show you the other packets that you're also going to need. So if we go here into Unity, and normally what I do is I just right click on packages and then show an explorer. And that way it'll open up everything in the explorer and then we can go into the manifest. And then I can just open that with code. And I already have in here what I need. I'm gonna make this bigger so you guys can see. So if we look at the package, the packages that we have, these are gonna be the three ones that you're gonna need. And if I paste this in here, you're gonna see it's the same version. So I can undo that. The one that, that I was looking for was this UTP because we're gonna need what's called a Unity Transport protocol to basically reroute the information to the relay. But I didn't see it for some reason. It, it might be getting installed once you do this, but just know that these three are gonna be the ones that you need. So you basically just put them in here. And once you do that, and then you save your project, it's going to install everything that, everything that we need. So once you do that, the next thing that I'm gonna do is we're gonna go into my network adapter here. And currently we have the unit transport and we're gonna use that, but not on this scene. We're gonna use it on the main scene. So we're gonna leave that one alone. On this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. And we're gonna be adding a new one. And this is gonna be the unity transport. And that's gonna be the package that I show you that was missing that it's going to give you this. That's something that I, I basically hit my head against the wall for a while and then I figure it out by looking at some of the demos from Unity. And then you're gonna change this to re Relay Unity Transport. And then everything in here is gonna stay the same. We don't have to change anything else, except that we need to drag and drop this into the Network Transport. And once you do that, that's going to be basically the transport that we're gonna be using for our Network Manager. So when we're multi doing multiplayer, it's going to be using that transport to basically do the communication, but we still need to reroute everything by doing some code allocation that I'm gonna be walking you through. So if we go back into scripts, I also have a Unity uh, a Relay Manager, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it here. And right now, all it is, this is just a singleton, and it's just a class. I didn't implement anything because I wanna show you how that works. And also, if you go to the canvas here, we have the UI Manager. Just know that this button is also the, the text box where we're capturing the code. It's already being bound to the UI manager. So that's something else that I added. So I think that's everything that we need to do as far as like what we need to do here. All you need to do is just make sure that you have the Unity Transport and we add the Relay Manager. This can also be static if you wanted to. I wanted to implement it this way because of some changes that we're going to allow to do. So I'll just go ahead and double click on my Relay Manager here. I can make it a little bit bigger. And right now, like you see, like you see, it has a Relay Manager and it has a Singleton. And this Singleton just come from the implementation that you see on every video. And if you want to download these, you know it's in the repo, which is in the description of this video. So there's a lot to do. So I'm just gonna explain everything part by part. So we're just gonna do a serializable, serialized field. And then I'll just bring in the Unity Engine. And I'll explain everything as, we, as we're typing. So this is gonna be basically for the environment. And the environment by default is gonna be production. So let me show you something related to production. So if we go back into the Unity services and you go into your environments here, Unity provides you with a way to change the environment. And this is really cool because if you had a QA environment, a staging type environment, you can go in here and basically do your testing environment. So I could say, okay, this is gonna be a staging or this is gonna be QA or however you wanna call it. You can set up different environments so that you can do testing with those environments. And, and basically what happens is if you change this in here, we're gonna tell Unity to use that environment so that when you do analytics and things like that, maybe you have a different pay plan, then that goes through that type of environment. I haven't really used them, used them other than, you know, I know how to handle it through code, but if you guys do find it helpful, I think, especially if you're gonna do production, you're gonna use this for production, once it's out of beta, I think it's going to be 
very helpful. So the next one that I'm gonna do is gonna be the max number of connections. So by default, I think right now, Unity is only allowing either five, up to five uh, concurrent connections or 10 concurrent connections. So I am going to set it, I think I set it to 10 and I think that works. So we'll just leave it at 10, but that's only during beta. Once they're out of beta, it's going to be, you know, as much as you're you know, allowed to use or paying to use. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to get basically the Unity Transport. So to do that, we're gonna do Unity Transport and I'm gonna call this one Transport. And the way that we're gonna get it is we need to get it from our Network Manager. So I'm gonna say Network Manager, Instance, and no Instance, Singleton. And then this is going to allow us to access the game object and then get component. And then it's gonna be our Unity Transport. So the way that it's gonna work is we're gonna try to get the Unity Transport. So for the first scene, we won't get a Unity Transport, so it's gonna be no. Then we know that we, we can't really use the relay. We know that we can just use unit. So that's why I have this one here, and I can also access it below to do the allocation of the relay server and also joining again, which I'm gonna show you as well. So the next property or, or yeah, property is gonna be each relay enable. And then this one we're gonna say transport, so I'm just gonna say if it's not no, and as long as the transport protocol, it's going to be the relay, which we have here. So we have a unity transport and a, and a relay unity transport. So the one that we're gonna be using is going to be the relay unity transport. And if we can make this, maybe I'll just bring this down so you guys can read it, since I have a large font. So, that's gonna be all the things that we need, like as far as like instances. So the next thing that we're gonna need is we're also gonna need how we're gonna be setting up the actual relay connection. So I'm gonna do an async, and then in the async, I'm gonna do a task, and this is gonna be getting a specific data, and that's going to be relay host data. And I'll show you how that looks like. And then it's gonna be set up relay. If we go back here. So let's go ahead and take a look at, let me bring in this task. And then I'm also going to do F12 to go to the implementation of this. So when we allocate the relay service, this is what we're going to be getting back. We're gonna get getting back a join code and this is gonna be the join code that we can access basically for another game and a client to access. The, the game is going to require that they provide a join code. So we're gonna get a join code. We're gonna get also an IP for address of the relay service, also a port an allocation ID, allocation ID bytes, connection data and key. And I'm gonna be linking to the description of the, uh, basically to a documentation about this, so you guys can read it. And we also have, in addition to that, we're gonna have a relay join data, and it's basically exactly the same, co the same contract, except that it's going to have host connection data that needs to be bas basically passed to the transport. If I say basically, again, bug me in the comments, because I need to, I need to learn to stop saying that. <laughs> So anyway, so we have that and that data is going to come back. So the next thing that I'll do is I'm gonna need to basically get, and I'm not gonna say that again, initiate, let me just do that again. It's gonna be initialization options and I'll bring that as well. It's gonna be options equal new options. And then in the new options, we have also a sec environment, sec environment. Make sure that I can do that name. And you're gonna try to see, okay, where is this at? Why is it not coming in? Because this is actually an extension that they provide. And you can see that it actually brought this in. And this is cool because now we can specify, okay, what is the environment that we're trying to set up options for? So in, in our case, it's gonna be, it's just gonna be production. Okay, so once we have the options that we're gonna be passing in to basically initi initialize the Unity services, we can, we can now do this. So we're gonna say Unity Services and then initialize a sync. And this is gonna be taking a parameter and if we go and hit up arrow, you're gonna see that it takes the options that we just declared there. So I can just do options. Okay, so far so good. So we have options, we have initialized a sync. So now what we need to do is, are we already authenticated? So we need to make sure that we, we check for that. Authentication service and then you can do control period. And once you do that, it's, you're gonna get an instance, it's gonna be an instance, and you can also determine if we're currently signing. So we need to make sure that, that we check for that because if we don't, then we need to make sure that we're signing in. So I'm just gonna do away, authentication service, and then instance, and we can sign in 
anonymous. And this is all based on the example that I got from, from the boss room and also some other documentation that Unity provides. So, so far, so good. We basically initialized. We are trying to uh, log in, and, and I, I'm pretty sure that we're going to get a token behind the scenes in here so we can talk to the relay service. But we, we won't really have to worry about that because all of this code is going to be doing that. And then we need to also use something called allocations. So it's going to do allocation and just do away because this is all using asynchronous calls. And I'm, do, I'm going to be bringing Unity services that relay instance. And this is going to say all the different methods that, we, you know, that we're going to have available, like join allocation async, list regions. So if you want to look at different regions, for this service, you can you can find that out as well. But we're going to be using the create allocation async. So this is going to be taking a max number of connections. So we have that. And like I said, during beta, it's going to be a small number. And then out of beta, it's going to be a much larger number. OK, so in here, we need to do relay host data. And it's going to be that. And we're just going to be creating an inline object so that we can specify all different parts. And then I'm going to do key allocation key. We also are going to need the port. And I believe this one is going to have to be cast to the U, a U short. And then I'm just going to do allocation, relay server. I believe that one is port. And then the next one is going to be allocation ID. Allocation. And then obviously it's going to be allocation ID, allocation bytes allocation and then I'll get the bytes. It's really important that you don't miss any of these things because I had issues with things being, you know, mapping correctly. So that's the last thing that you want to do is map something incorrectly and then spend hours trying to find out what the issue really is. And then it's going to be connection data. So we're just basically getting the information that we got from the relay service by creating a new, a new allocation. And then we're getting the data built so that we have that information in, a, in an object. OK, so now that we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to request the join code. And I already have that join code in here, which is going to be part of that object. And then I'm going to be calling into a new method, which is going to be part of the relay instance. And I believe you already saw it because I was, I was just showing you all the different options. So if we do get join code async, but we need to say, in this case, relay host data, and then we need to pass in the allocation ID. So this is just creating what's called an allocation. Once we get the allocation, we're going to get all this data back. And then we're saying, OK, relay service, can you give us a join code? Because we have authenticated correctly. We have, and at this point, we should have a join code that we can pass to the clients, and they can join. Basically, they can join our game. It sounds simple, and it is simple, but it took me some time <laughs> to, to figure it out. OK, so now that, we have, that we're have that we at that point, I need to set some information to the transport, right? Because the transport doesn't really know anything about what's happening. The transport doesn't call this automatically. We have to call it. So we need to tell the transport that we got some of that information back and what that information is. So it's going to be relay host. It's going to be the IP address. We also need to say relay host data. This one is going to be the port. The next one is going to be the allocation ID bytes. The next one is going to be the actual key. And make sure that you do that correctly. And then the next one, and I'm just reading the parameters here, is going to be the connection data bytes. And then it's going to be the connection data. And then as far as like the additional parameters in here, like, like host connection data bytes, that's going to be something that we pass on when we are joining a game. It's not going to be something that we do currently. And then what I'll do here also just say relay host data. OK, so this is great, but I want to see what's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of information to my log. So I'm going to say logger instance log info. In this case, I'm going to use interpolation here, if I can type that correctly. Relay server and starting with max connections. And then I'll just pass in the max connections that we set. Just it's always good to have as much logging as we can. As long as it, you know, if it's not overkill, then I wouldn't add it. But in, in this case, I want to say relay server get join code or or generate it, generate it a join code. And we can just 
past that join code, I'll just go ahead and copy this here. And I think that should give us everything, everything we need to, to set up a relay server. And, and now we need to do the join. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do another method here. So it's also going to be asynchronous. It's gonna be a task. This is gonna be, instead of the, the relay host, it's gonna be relay join data. And then I'm just gonna call it join relay. We're gonna need to pass in a join code because at this point we're joining the game. So we need to tell the relay service, okay, what are we joining? Who are we joining? And in this case, it's gonna be you know join code, which we generated it here from the from the actual server. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this part right here, which we're gonna need again, so we can do that. You can also put that in a method if you don't want to duplicate the data. And then in here, I'll just do something a little bit different. It's gonna be join allocation. We can say join allocation, or if you wanna just say allocation just to keep it consistent. And then await, we can call into our relay instance, which is a singleton. And then the way that it's gonna work is in this case, we're not getting a code, we're joining. So it's gonna ask that we pass in the joining code, which we are passing right now. So once we pass that, we should get an allocation and that allocation is gonna have additional information, which I could type right now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it because I've been lazy. And I show you that here, so I didn't wanna do it one more time. But anyways, all we're doing here is just building up another object and just mapping, just like I mapped before. But in this case, we get additional information because now we have to pass in the host connection data because we're connect connecting to the host. And also the, the joining code. That's the only thing different in here. And then what I'll do here, I'll just do, I have to access my transport. We also need to tell it what a relay information is gonna be. So I'm gonna say relay join data and it's gonna be IP4. And then I'll do comma, relay join data, it's gonna be my poor. And I'm gonna be surprised if I don't get any errors because I am typing everything very quick. So hopefully, hopefully everything is gonna work. So just bear with me guys, don't, don't drop yet. And then it's gonna be our my connection data. And then lastly, my host connection data. So if this was secure, you can set this to true. I, I, I haven't used it, but I would imagine if it's something to do with SSL, then you would have to set that to true. But normally I don't see that that is happening unless it's happening behind the scenes because the URLs to the, to the relay service are all generated automatically. But I just wanted to show you that that was there. And then I can just return the relay join data. And then let's also add a little bit of login in here. I'll just add some login at the end. And then I'll just say instance, log information. And then in this case, I'll just say that our client join game with join code. And then we can just pass in the join code in here. So that we know if we don't get to this point, that means that something bad happened in this case. So it's always good to just to keep some, some of that login information available. Okay, so that's really cool and all. So now if we go back into Unity, let's just make sure that nothing is going to blow up. And we need to now that we do we did that, we need to change how we start the client and also how we start the host. But I wanna check, make sure that everything is working in here. If we go back in here, we have the environment production. And that's why I make this one uh, basically a singleton mono behavior because I wanted to be able to change that here through the inspector. But in the Unity documentation, you'll see it you'll see them using uh, basically a static class and you can do that. I mean, it just really depends on what, you, what you're currently building. Okay, so that's cool. Now let's go ahead and go back and we're gonna go and focus here on the UI manager just for a few minutes because we're gonna have to change how this works. Well, we won't have to change how this works, but we'll need to add more additional, basically additional implementation. So one of the bugs that I had is I was generating, so basically what I was doing, and I wanna, I wanna make sure you pay attention to this because I had a lot of issues with it and the Unity multiplayer team, gratefully, and I wanna thank them, they helped me through this problem. So the way that I had it set up initially is I was calling into setup relay as soon as the game was starting and basically on the awake method. And, and that's cool and that worked, but I had an issue where I was getting an error saying like the join code could not be found and it, it basically didn't work. And it didn't work because 
when you set up the relay, when you call this method, you have to call, you basically start your host right away. If you don't do that, I think Unity on the service has a, a timeout or, or basically like a time difference of when you can do those two calls. So make sure that if you set up, a, if you're setting up a relay, you have to start the, either the server or the host right away. Otherwise you're gonna get a lot of issues. And again, I wanna thank the, the team at Unity for helping me through that because it was really driving me crazy. So if we go to the start host, this is what we're gonna do here. The first thing that I wanna do is I want to make sure that I have my relay, the relay is enabled. And if it is enabled, then we can basically just set it up, right? We're gonna do away. And if I'm gonna do away, that means that we need to change this to be a sync. So I'm just gonna say relay manager instance, and then I'm just going to do my relay. And we can just set up the relay. And that's basically all we need to do here because most of the implementation is in is in this guy. So similar to that, we're gonna have to do something in the in the client. And if we go to the client, we're gonna do basically the same thing, but in this case, we're gonna be joining a game. So we're gonna be joining. In that join code, remember the client has it, they put it into a join code input. And that, that's where we're gonna get it from. But I always like to make sure that I typed it in before we before we do that. We also need to make this a sync, otherwise it's gonna complain because we're using away. And then I'll also do like as long as the string is null, is not null or empty, then we can we will do this, right? Wanna make sure that we always check for validity before we do things. So if the relay is enabled and they type in a code we're gonna be joining the relay and then we're gonna start the client right away. So that's basically everything to get this working. So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm gonna go ahead and start my host. I did get a code and you can see that the character is also in the game. So let's try and see if we can enter that code in here. So it's gonna be six BQ FFN. And I'm going to go ahead and start the client. And if everything works, I should see client join the game with code. So. I can move my client in here. And I can also move my other client in here. And we can see that we have two games, two players in the game. And I know this is working because this is a new scene where we have the new transport. I'm also going to, on the server side, I'm going to go ahead and execute my physics. And you can see that everything, everything is rendering and running correctly. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you had, guys have any questions about these, if you have other questions about future videos, let me know in the comments because that's going to help me in bringing you more videos. And make sure that you subscribe to the channel because that's going to allow me to keep you basically informed with what I'm doing with a lot of different prototypes. Thank you guys.